Basically, to start, you need to download the uh, Moleflow. Typically, you do a Google search from Moleflow, and uh, now this is the first result. And then on this website, like uh, one important thing before we actually download it is that you've got a way, like a forum, to get in touch with us. You can report bugs and issues which you encounter, and uh, usually we try to reply as soon as possible. Otherwise, here is this uh, documentation part where you probably came from, so you've got like several tutorials. And uh, the download section is where you can find Moleflow for different operating systems. At the time of recording this uh, webinar, like the latest version is 2.7.10. I will be using the Mac version today because it's easy to record the screen and narrate it, but it should be exactly the same as all the other versions for other operating systems. One difference is that uh, the control key for Windows versions and Linux versions have been replaced with the Mac command key, but apart from that shortcut difference, uh, the function should be the same. So when you have downloaded Moleflow, you find it, here I have just extracted it and given permissions to the executable files, which is described um, in the website. So you can see this moleflow.config file and I will just delete it because all the settings like customizations, the last used files I saved in this config file. So by deleting it, I reinitialize moleflow to the state how it was when you actually downloaded it from the website. So moleflow, I will just put the screen to as large as possible. And right now it's, uh, the interface is pretty empty uh, because we don't have any uh, geometry on it. Now instead of constructing a real geometry or like loading an existing file, the easiest to get started with is to simply get a pipe on the screen. So we've got this test menu in Moleflow which was originally there for debugging and you can actually ask a pipe. I will just use the quick pipe which is like really the simplest geometry that you can have in Moleflow. So then let's look at the mouse commands because this is something that you have to get used to in the beginning. Um, to pan the geometry, so to move the geometry, I hold the middle mouse button, so which is a mouse wheel, but you can also hold it. And then you can actually move your geometry on the screen. Then if you hold the right mouse button, then you can rotate the geometry. Then you can use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. If you get lost, for example, your geometry goes out of screen and you don't know where you are, then here on the lower right corner, you've got this auto zoom button. And one interesting thing is now you can see it's getting turned on. So by rotating geometry, it will always fill the screen. However, as soon as you use some panning, this gets disabled and now it will hold the zoom as it was before. Now, uh, since now we can rotate the geometry, one advanced thing is that you can actually hold the control key or the command key for Mac and it allows you to rotate around the third axis. But right now if you do that, then after that the rotation axis will change as well. So let's say it's not uh, recommended, you can only uh, do that to get out of the default view. So um, for example if you did this, and you uh, want to go to some default view settings, then here in the lower left corner, you've got the front, top, and side views. So you can go to the front view, top view, and side view of your geometry. And one interesting thing is that in this case, you can do like a special windowed zoom. So here in the lower right corner, you can see the small magnifying glass. You can draw an area, and then the zoom will actually stick to that area. To go back, you can just go to auto scaling, or you could, for example, click on the front button and then you would go back to the default view. So here I will click back to the default selection mode, which is like this key. So, so far we can uh, see the geometry in a wireframe method. However, on the top right corner, you can toggle what you want to display. One of the interesting things is you can turn on the volume view and then your uh, geometry will be shown as a solid shape as opposed to a wireframe. So right now the other parts uh, are not interesting, we'll see them later as the simulation is going on. But then again there are a few things that you can set in this view menu. For example, if you have a geometry that's rotating too quickly, 
then you can reduce this angle step parameter. So instead of 0 0.005 degrees per mouse movement, I can set a smaller volume and then I can uh, rotate really finely my geometry. Also, as I'm holding the mouse button, you can see that here at the bottom of the screen, you've got some tooltips showing up. So it says hold shift to slow down rotation, so then you can do really fine uh, rotation. Hold control to rotate around the third axis that we have seen already. And hold alt to rotate lighting direction of volume view. What does that mean? Here you've got the lighting coming from the lower uh, top left corner, but if you press the alt key, then you can actually do a rotation and then you simply rotate the light. And the usefulness of this function is that, for example, at this point it's really hard to distinguish these two sides. However, by putting the light you can get some additional contrast between parts of your geometry. Okay, and also like other parts of the geometry, so like we will see facet selections later, here you would get the physical parameters of the facet that you have selected. Here you can turn on some shortcuts for profile texture and texture scaling, by default they are disabled, we will see what they do. And here you get the controls for launching your simulation. Before we do any kind of simulation, we will see how you can select facets, and that will be the next part. But some other tools that you can do is here in the tools, you've got the global settings. And for example, you can set um, to have a white background. And white background is useful because then you can easier uh, export your geometry to a report or some scientific figure. Some interesting tools is like in the tools, there is this take screenshot and then you can just draw a part and that will be saved in your MoFlow folder. So here now I've got the screenshots folder and he has saved the geometry. This is something that you might use. Uh, I will just turn off the white background. You can also have a left and right-handed coordinate system. To see the coordinate system, you can see the X, Y, and Z axis starting from the 0, 0, 0 coordinate of your geometry. This is also optional, so on the top right, if you click on the rules, then you can turn on and off the display of this. This feature that you might use sometimes is that here on the bottom right corner, you can click on this button, and then you can see four different views of the same geometry. Each of them can be rotated and adjusted to the same, uh, to its individual view. So for example, this could be like the front view, this could be the top view, and this could be the side view. And in addition, all of them can have different view parameters. So for example, here I can turn on the volume view, here I can turn off the rules and uh, let it be a volume view as well. And right now we will see later that as you select facets, they all get selected on all views as well. So this would be a convenient way to work on different sides of your uh, geometry. If you'd like to go back to a single view, then you select the one that you'd like to keep and then you click on this button and that will fill the screen and then everything will work as it was uh, before.